I said it's going to be one of those how-to videos. I'm not going to show you how to change an alternator on your truck. There might be some tips and tricks in here along the way a little bit, but I doubt it. It's just an alternator. It really isn't much to it. Uh, more along the lines of just kind of showing you some everyday life of uh, what goes on behind the scenes of a drag racer. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at. I mean, you see a little bit of what gone out with that video somehow I lost footage for so you didn't get to really see much of the maintenance on the car. Well you got to see kind of what I had to do with the trailer a little bit. Part two of that should be out already by the time this video airs. Uh, this is just the day in the life of a mechanic when you have older vehicles. Uh, the one trailer video, the second part of it, it showed up in there and I talked about diagnosing the alternator. It turns out once you start driving it down the road, it loses voltage. And I'm not sure why, but we're changing the alternator, so I'm pretty sure that's the problem. The regulator and the alternator is probably bad, so we're going to change it. That's it. Just charging it for me. Six six baby. That's how we do it. Here we are. We're out in the garage. We got our little helper. We got our uh, sneak peek coming up that I was telling you about. Our nice killer little bracket motor we got. We got Grandpa hanging out here with us. Don't mind the mess in the garage here. We'll get this thing unwrapped and show you what's going on. I'm not sure if we were recording there, Grandpa. He may have hit the button. So we'll redo some of it. I got a dome on that piston. So this is just your standard big block Chevy. It's had quite a bit of work done to it many years ago. We we'll see how it's all ground inside there, all nice and clean. We got our shop cap right here. My two-year-old daughter's out here learning how to build motors. Having fun? Yep, she's having fun. <coughs> so you can see when a motor broke here, the valve touched that piston. All the parts that hit the piston there. With the motor, don't worry about that. It's just plastic cellophane down there. Let me get that out of there. But the block itself appears to be okay. We're going to take it over to the machine shop. It's been sitting back there in a the corner of the garage for the last couple years. So let's explain to people, Grandpa, kind of what happened to this motor here. Do we know what happened to this motor? Yeah, push the, push the valve, got it right down. So that so when the piston came up, it backfired, and it, it wasn't a good backfire. No. So we were out at Ugly Dragway a couple years ago when this motor was in the car. This is a uh, this is a 433. It's a 427 that's been bored 30 over. It's got good pistons, good rods, still crank. Got a nice killer Luanati. It's a Luanati cam, isn't it? 
No, this is uh, Alter Dine. Alter it's got a nice Alter Dine cam in it. So it was old school, built a long time ago. We had it in the car. We made, I don't know, 25, 30 passes in the car. We were on an ugly dragway. We had made three, four runs that day. And coming down the return road, the car wasn't running all that great, but it was still running. I pulled it up to the trailer and shut the car off. The car sat there for a little bit. All I wanted to do was move the car so it was easier to hook the battery charger up to the car. You know, batteries are in the trunk. So he wanted to move the car to make it easier uh, just to hook up the charger. And when we went to go start the car, the car wouldn't start. And we kept cranking, kept cranking, and hoofed white smoke. Ain't that right, Grandpa? Hoofed white smoke <laughs> out of every orifice it could. And it backfired so hard, it split the oil pan apart and dumped all the oil right in front of the race car trailer. So at that time, didn't have the money or the time or anything like that to... Uh, to rebuild the motor or put the motor back together so we just you know grandpa is the big block guru he's got tons of them laying around so we just put one together and threw it in the car because it was right there it was accessible i think all it needed was an intake and a distributor and an oil pan so we put that thing together and put it in the car and that's what we've been using in the car for the last couple of years but Huh? You talk about the whole walk. Us, we our sitting in front of the trailer. trailer, right? We got lucky. We got very lucky because it was it was all the oil. I mean, you know, it split the pan, so seven, everything. Seven quarts of oil. Yeah. Maybe. The the people there at the track, the reason they remember me, they know Grandpa and my dad from years ago going there. They went there for years, but they remember me for the oil stain I left in the pit area. So. So, got the engine up on the stand now, getting ready to clear the piston, see what kind of clearance it's got. I know this motor is messed up, and uh, when it wrecked the valves, when the guides came out of the head and it, and it wrecked the valves and stuff like that, it did it in the two front cylinders, so cylinder one and cylinder two. Um, so the cylinders behind that are were still good. The valves are still all in there, stuff like that. Didn't pull the, the guides out or nothing there. I know that there's a problem with the heads. The heads are gonna go off to the machine shop. The block's gonna get all ripped down to nothing but a bare block. And I'm gonna have the uh, the pistons checked, make sure they didn't collapse. And uh, a couple of the lifters spun in the lifter bores, so they gotta be cleaned up and stuff like that. Um, but uh, what I want to do is uh, this thing. Typically, when I clay a, a piston for valve clearance, I don't use a head gasket. I do it without a head gasket. I have a couple compressed head gaskets around here to do that. Uh, but my theory, you know, your typical head gasket, you can get them in different thicknesses, but your typical head gasket's anywhere from 30 to 40 thousandths thick. Uh, I usually try to run like 30 thousandths thick head gaskets. So. If I got clearance without it, if I got a ton, if I got my clearance that I'm looking for, I like to have about a hundred thousandths of clearance. If I have that without a head gasket, I know with, with a head gasket, I got plenty. And I know that if I'm like 80 or 90 thousandths without a head gasket, I know when I put the gasket in there, it'll be fine. I can rev them as high as I want, stuff like that and be okay. Uh, over here at Patent Performance, we do things a little bit differently Big than ball. most people. Of, uh, I don't know, can we see that? Yeah. We got a nice big ball down here of uh, clay. I believe that's the intake side. Uh, I don't know, I have to look at cylinder head. <laughs> I think that's it. Anyhow, I just stick it down on a piston. I squirt a little WD 40 on it so it do not stick to the valve. Hopefully, if it does, then I'll put some cellophane on it and do it again. Uh, but yeah, this is what we're getting ready to find out. I'm just checking clearance to see if I can go with a bigger cam. That's all I'm doing. And then I'll disassemble this motor. One thing that I do, uh, find out exactly how much advance this cam's got in it before I disassemble it. Just, just for some tech notes. You know, just jot some things down a little bit here and there. And 
That way you know, you know. I want to know. I'm curious, you know. How far did he take it? Is it 8 degrees, 10 degrees, 12 degrees, 6 degrees, 4 degrees? I don't know. I want to know. So that's what I'm going to do. But first things first, let's clay this piston. So we're back out here today, uh, Saturday. We're going to go ahead and start getting this block tore down. Uh, the machine guy didn't answer his phone today, so I wasn't able to drop the heads off today. But that block's got to go to them too, so we're going to go ahead and disassemble the block, make it a bare block, and then uh, we'll take it to the machine guy after that. short block got a few more things that we gotta get out of it like the freeze plugs and a couple other plugs but the slugs are out my slugs I mean pistons cranks out crank looks really good all the bearing journals look real good on this thing the only question I have here is this piston Looks like that piston ate something. Kind of see it a little bit. There's definitely something on the top there. 
which is weird because that's a back piston we didn't have problems in the back there but that doesn't mean that it couldn't have came up into the intake and went down into a different port when it broke them guides out of there but for the most part all of them kind of look okay up around the top here up above the first compression ring there's a little bit of scarring on a few of them so that's kind of a, a question that I'll have for the machine shop guy see what he says about it but we're all tore down we got it ready to go it's ready to go to the machine shop I mean for the most part I just got a few more things I got to get out of it and uh, a couple other things that I want to do to it before I take it. It's got a little bit of flash rusting from sitting in the corner for the last year or two. So I want to get that off there because uh, after checking the clearance, uh, the valve clearance yesterday, I saw in the quench area, it's pretty tight. So I don't want to have, I don't want the block decked. I don't want the heads decked or nothing like that. There's, I think we saw there was only like, uh, 34 thousandths of clearance in the quench. Uh, I, don't, I don't really want to get much tighter than that. Um, but the valves valves had, had plenty of clearance. Um, you know, the cam card said to lash them hot at 30. So I lashed them at 21 cold here in the garage and, and checked that it had 95 thousandths of clearance. I usually like to see 100. Uh, but, you know, hey. 95 is all right, so we're gonna go with the same exact identical cam that we can or as close to it as possible um, You know he's got to get in there where the lifters had spun in the bore He's gonna have to clean up a couple of the lifter bores and stuff like that and check it out and and he'll tell me what he thinks there He's a good guy. We've used uh, This guy over at this machine shop quite a few years he Does great work he runs that whole machine shop all by himself uh, so he's he's quite busy usually always but that's all right it's getting a winter winter really really hasn't even hit yet so hopefully you know the motor gets back to me in a timely fashion I can get it back together get it all in the car before springs here before drag racing reason uh, drag racing season starts a uh, couple of the cam bearings don't look all that great, so you know he's gonna hot tank it, so he's gonna put all new cam bearings and stuff in it anyhow. Uh, but that, I mean, that about wraps it up for tonight. I'm done out here today. Sun's sun's going down. It's gotta be pushing around five o'clock or so. So uh, I'm gonna wrap it up out here for the night. Kill the heat. Shut the lights all down. Go inside the house. Eat some dinner. Hang out with the fam. Maybe watch a movie or something. And we'll be back out here tomorrow knocking the freeze plugs out of it, getting it, getting it rested away, uh, ready to go, get all the plugs, everything all out of it.